Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos, and this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Uh, I'm doing something different today. I am at my local venue, and uh, I'm, I'm talking and, and bringing on uh, some of my local people who uh, help me play tests, help me uh, look at meta stuff outside of uh, my Phoenix Nest teammates. So uh, I have uh, Mega Lotus Man, a.k.a. Josh. Hello, fellow nerds. He's been on the show before. Uh, I have Jake. I forgot what your handle is. On what? JP88. Well, yeah, JP88. JP88. I'm not on realms, though. You're not? You're on realms. You were complaining on there yesterday. I saw it. That was legit, legit complaining. Wait. Legit complaining. Okay. I haven't seen it in years. All right, there's, there's yeah, Jake. No, I'm, I'm very rarely on. All right, and uh, I have Seth. Uh, who goes by... Heated Tofu. Heated Tofu, yeah. I, I'm surprised I forgot that, considering we're PlayStation friends. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, pretty much we have like a little Kansas City chat, and we go back and forth uh, while we should be productive at work, uh, talking about Hero Click. So what we're going to do is we're going to first talk about our thoughts of 15th anniversary so far, uh, talk about, you know, did you know WizKids live up to the hype of it, and then we're we'll going to our expectations, and then we're going to talk about the sets. And that's hopefully going to be today's show, unless I derail us. So there we go. So let's let's start off. Uh, 15th anniversary, and I'm going to round table it and direct traffic. Was it everything that you hoped it to be? I'm going to start with Seth. No, it was a horrible disappointment. Okay. Horrible disappointment starting off. Josh, what's, what's your thoughts? For my specific expectations for any set, it's almost completely failed. It has some redeeming qualities, but for the most part, it's pretty poor. But that could just be because it's on the presumably the front edge of the, the change they've been doing with the low click thing. So I don't like that in general. Okay, so Jake, not only are the sets a colossal disappointment. In just about every way imaginable, what if might be the worst set NECA has ever produced? It quite frankly, I find the two sets insulting as a customer and as a fan of the game. I would not argue on the what if one. Okay, and that's, that, that yeah, set no, of... it is, like, if you look at NECA's run, what if is just god awful. Okay, so that set us for the argument. So, so far, everyone feels that they failed. What do you team. think, Dark Logos? <laughs> what are your opinions show. of the set? It's my show! <laughs> That's right. Some of your Hold on, wait, 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 wait. want to know. Hey, we already saw my review of What If. I said it was a poo emoji with a cherry on top. <laughs> okay? I mean, that was the cherry Goblin King or was it Spider Man? Uh, the cherry was actually a combination of Goblin King, Spider Man, and Peace Machine. Yeah. See, what's weird is those are some of the. For, re for some reason, those are some things I hate the most. Not Spider Man, he's cool. You hate it because those pieces change the meta so much? Not not the, because they change the meta, but because now I seem to be alone on the Peace Machine issue, but. But that they're so obviously overpowered. Like it's not like anybody. <laughs> like it's, there's no. There's not like oh this is a little bit worse than this other thing. It's just it's every once in a while Nika or whoever they really do it where you look, where everybody at once looks at the figure and goes what the hell are they thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Faust. Yeah. Faust. Yeah. Uh, uh, Spiral was. I remember her was Spiral one of those initially. Right. Or, uh, what? Do they not play this game? Do, yeah, they, they, do they not understand the effects of like choosing your own powers, you know, willy-nilly? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they've been doing it for a while, and, they, and you would think, you, you would think experience would play into it at some point. They're like, hey, no, we we have, we have know what we're doing. We got this. Right. We're going to try and put out a semi-human team. Potentially, or, if Goblin King had a environment. naked dial. A what? Like, if Goblin King had a naked dial that, on his own, then he would be like Engineer. He'd just be the new engineer. engineer. Had some powers. Well, engineer had powers. Engineer had defensive powers. But he had sidestep and toughness. Yeah, and he couldn't choose a defensive power. You couldn't but, choose a defensive power. But like yeah, even even true. Super Scroll, who could choose up to four powers yeah. for, he still had other powers to go with it. I mean, it's but he didn't have boss powers. That's the thing. Right. Like he, he didn't start with Rob. No, uh, Super Scroll. I don't think so. But he had powers. Is the point? You know. 
Uh, maybe they're not the best powers. For Goblin King, but he has the potential to keep coming back. And, he, and, and I understand opinion. that's an old piece, and, but and they're two in the and in the case specifically in the case of Goblin King and Jakeem Thunder, they are too deep to have what is essentially full dial invincibility if they want it. Okay, we're here. Mary. So yeah, okay. So we're here. Let's just go ahead and just talk about sets because. Screw planning. That literally just got thrown out <laughs> in like the first five there minutes. No order. No. <laughs> okay. Whiskids for me, Whiskids positioned these sets from the start as the fifteenth anniversary set. So my expectations for the set were the tenth anniversary sets. They needed to be as good as those two sets. Coupled with the what if factor that people have been waiting yeah, for for what is here else worlds two of the most requested um, themes for a set. Well, because we've, we've all been rehashed the same characters so many times, but there's still so many of these obscure instances of them that still haven't had iterations yeah. and hero clicks, and this was an opportunity to really just give drop a ton of them out, and I don't know, it was a handful. Seth, what's your thoughts real quick? Well, obviously, there's some still fight or argument with X-Men, which are arguably some of the best what-ifs, and obviously Fantastic Four. But even aside from that, there have been some really fun, interesting what-ifs and Elseworlds that they could have put in here instead of seven Daredevils. Now, now there was one thing while we were at work Jake did bring up. How the heck, if there were no X-Men, how did we get for free comic book pay? Professor X Juggernaut. And that's a what if. We, we just had two <laughs> X-Men sets, and it was a reprint of the X-Men set. And my understanding is, is uh, Nika has to work with Marvel, and they have to make yes. these decisions. Yeah. And, and for whatever reason, they got away with that one good for them. But if you know you are going... You, we Players who are aware of Marvel, or even can, players who are aware of set releases, can notice that you know X-Men sets... Deadpool sets, they're relegated to their own thing. They don't cross over with the other Marvel characters. If you know that's going to be a factor, why do a theme, like What If, where so much of it is rooted in Fantastic Four and X-Men, your set's inherently flawed from the get-go, and you're going to be disappointing countless number of players. If you wanted to do a crazy, like, alternate future set or alternate timeline set, you could do that with Spider-Man Avengers. Um, you could do a whole bunch of crazy alternate timeline stuff. You could even throw What If characters in there. But if, as long as you don't call it What If, you don't have to meet that expectation. So two issues, and not even arguments, just points, is possibly, is one is that um, uh, I don't know enough about What If personally. But I would assume that over the years, there's been enough non, uh, uh, still enough non X Men, non Fantastic Four to fill out a 50 character set. Yeah. And and two is that most Nika sets, uh, or any here we've said not necessarily Nika, they are intermingling of you know they're not necessarily what the thing is billed as. They shove all sorts of other stuff in there on the thing. So. Uh, our, my initial expectation, they said, "What if?" was a pipe dream of saying, "Oh, this whole thing's gonna be what if," and right away, there's a bunch of six sixteen stuff in it. There are for what if there are a lot of Avengers, uh, com like what if comics, or a lot of solo people comics. But the ones, the fan, like the big ones, the ones that are really popular, the iconic ones tend to be Fantastic Four or X Men. The Avenger ones, you have like, what if Avengers lost Galactic War? And then maybe, but it's like, yeah, what if they, X -Men then, lost Inferno? Yeah, but then yeah. you have like, what if Spider Man was trained by Wolverine? Or uh, what if the Fantastic Four, you know, all had different powers? Different powers. That was what if one. Doom was Sorcerer Supreme? Like, a lot of really famous old titles are Fantastic Four and X Men, and even if there are good Avengers ones, you're still calling the set what if. You're still giving customers that hope and expectations. And yeah. when you don't live up 
it's still filled. The thing is, is even if that's the case, I, I, I'm not arguing. No, no, these are two, these are two separate still, points. Um, they still manage to fill it with some of the most boring stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's why, that's why I think, I think what if has better character selection than Elseworlds, but the dials in what if and the sculpts in what if are god awful. Okay, real briefly, Seth. Well, they're kind of making part of my point. One of my points was, yeah, the, the dials are just extremely boring. Uh, the Runaways could have been a really fun little extra team that you could put together for mm-hmm. a team team. Um, you know, in the Teen Titans in the past, they've made, you could make some fun, viable, playable team teams. teams yeah. Well, Runaways, you just know you're playing a lesser team just to use yeah. them. Just like they did with Marauders. I, the impression that the, I mean, from what I looked at, mm-hmm. the Runaways were some of the few figures that didn't seem to follow the kind of boring, low point low power usage formula that the rest of the set had. They seem to have escaped it and have more of a, uh, not maybe not as good as the best things in, say, Deadpool and X-Force, but along, they could have been in that set and you wouldn't have noticed it. You wouldn't have said, why are they? They're like right? B+. Plus. Yeah. yeah. But well, they're Gertrude. Also, Gertrude is A. Yes. Gertrude, Gertrude is yes. A. Gertrude yeah. is the best one, but yeah. they're also outclassed by other stuff in the set. Just look at Nico and Monroe and look at the 75-point Goblin Key. Oh god! They do the same thing, but you would never cho- unless you're playing a runaway steam team. You are yeah, never yeah. going to pick Nico over Goblin King. Well, but I, sorry, uh, what you brought up about sets usually having like a title, like what if is the title of the set, and then under and then sets have other stuff to go in there. You're talking about the sub themes per se, like Superior Foes Spider Man. At Spider Verse and um, Serpent Society, Society yeah. uh, we tend to get a lot of those sub theme people in the sets. They fill another out. Um, Superman Legion Superheroes. Your sub theme was um, Apocalypse. No, not Apocalypse. Uh, Legion of Doom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Legion, Legion of Doom. Doom, and that was half the set. And they advertised that that was the sub theme in all the handouts. But they also did the fast forces um, around it. Yeah. So, for uh, what if the advertised sub themes were runaways, which we got all of them, they were the Agents of Shield people, which we got, I think, a all lot. of the ones from What If. But who cares? For Elseworlds, <laughs> for Elseworlds, the advertised sub themes of Planetary and Justice Riders, we get three figures each. Sure. Okay. Well, let's let Seth. Go. My my other point that I was trying to get to is. Because this is the 15th anniversary, it's supposed to be iconic. It's supposed to mean something to the company and to us as the consumer. You would think that they would have worked that much harder with Marvel, even a years leading up to it, a couple years leading up, saying, I know normally you only allow us to do X-Men in a bubble, or you allow us to do anything else in Marvel in a bubble. But we need, in this case, to be able to blend them for this small set, for this unique opportunity. You would think that they would have worked really hard to try and do that, and maybe even possibly got an exception for Fantastic Four. Probably not because they're really pulling everything out of Fantastic Four. Even, you know, even the figures at this point. They might have tried, and maybe they did. That's that's what they. But like, they sh- they should have at least said leading up to what if X Men won't be. In. They could have at least told us that they've had how many different press releases. Yeah, but that could have been in. But people, my people who don't really pay attention. To set releases or uh, figure releases ahead of time, might just grab a booster. What if thinking it they'll be? Expert. But that but that comes down to the integrity of the company and their relationship uh, look, with us as the consumer. We're gonna we buy their product almost. We are all aware that without the integrity of WizKids and NECA is not what it once was. <laughs> like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No I just want to note that it's not me saying it this time. No one's it's under the illusion at this, at this issues. point of the life of WizKids and the Hero Clicks that they are concerned with anything but money. NECA is running the game into the ground. Just look at the amount of set releases this year. First of all, we have to we have to take into account that there are lots of different people who look at the games lots of different ways. Yeah. Um, there are lots of people who think, um, I'm sure that Nick is doing a great job, that they're producing good figures, uh, entertaining figures. You know, and, and honestly, there always seems to be somebody who will defend anything for some reason. Um, but uh, I forgot where I was going with that, so okay. But, no, uh, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, but okay, but let's let's let's, but, let's go back real briefly, real briefly, because we we talked about. He brings up a good point. 
if you knew that there weren't going to be Fantastic Four and you knew there wasn't going to be X Men, and, and they advertised that, do you think people would have pre-ordered What If? Certainly, some. I mean, there, there are some again. There are some people who were whatever, and there are some people who love Daredevil and Punisher. And by the way, I just counted. <laughs> 13 modern age daredevils that we have now, one of which that's over 100 points, all of which are pretty boring. Okay. I mean, that that's what the set said to me, is it, it's what if, and they're like, what if, And but it's, other than a, a handful of the figures, they are amazingly bland. Like, even some of the off-brand ones, like the, the, the not generic looking Spider-Man is, uh, Spider-Man with a cape? Yeah. Daredevil with a cape? In yeah. the sculpts, the sculpts themselves are in their believable way. There was a chance for us yes. to see something we don't normally because see. Because it was Netflix's yeah. job. The moment they realized, okay, we're not going to get Fantastic Four, we're not getting rights to X-Men, then it's their job to go back and say, okay, we still have an opportunity to shine. Let's find yeah. the obscure what-ifs. Let's find these weird ones. Yeah. Let's put in some crazy pieces that no one would expect. Maybe it was only like with the, the Kingdom Come pieces. There are, there are some pieces that were only in a single panel. Well, go find those pieces in What If and wow the hell out of us and pretend, show us that you actually are interested in your job and that you didn't fall asleep creating that character. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they clearly don't care about putting effort into this. Agreed. If they did, you wouldn't have the re -sculpts, which I think is most people's big issue I, I, with the set. I think... What, what seems to me, and one thing that I was frustrated with the set is how small it is, and even though in the end it's not that much smaller than normal, um, but so I, I think it's too big. If, well, it's too big for that much crap. So, <laughs> uh, but it could have been bigger and been full of more interesting characters, but it just isn't. Or it could have just been a bigger crap. Yeah, right. I, it could have. But the point is, is that it seems incredibly plausible that, and I think. So some of the sets have been like the Ninja Turtle sets are this way. Like the Ninja Turtle set seems like uh, it was a f wave one, wave two were full sets. They split into two because, you know, get more money and maybe it sells a little better as individuals because turtles, whatever. But this, both of these sets seems like they had been spawned from the idea of being a summer event similar to uh, chaos, not chaos war, uh, the civil war. So, like an OP. Like an right, OP. Right. Yeah. One of those things, Fear which itself. are usually 30 figure sets. And then they said, you know, but it's what if, it's 15th anniversary, let's just sell it. We'll inflate it, and yeah. they started doubling up on the sculpts. Like, speaking of which, just as me, what is with Black Widow? Why are there two approximately the same Black Widow? It's just, that's not in what if. No, that's oh, Avengers that, Defenders. That's Avengers Defenders. Defenders. But it's still a terror. It's a good point. Wait, wait. That was, but that's a good point. All this Avengers crap, it's, it's also a good point um, to bring up that we've had so much product that crap starts to bleed together. Like, yeah. literally bad figures start to bleed together and you wonder which... Well, well to me, the... the I, okay. Go, go, go ahead, Jay. Oh, yeah. I think these sets should have been, like the 10th anniversary, 24 figure sets. Agreed. And when I told Edward, um, let NECA have the re -sculpts. Give them those six um, figures that they want to put in the starter and let them have that those first six slots and then you can have instead of having a promotion mechanic have some sort of shifting focus mechanic and have them be able to turn into what if or else worlds versions of those characters that gives you 12 character slots where you can double up but then you use the 12 slots instead of having five daredevils or instead of having 10 batman or whatever amount is in else worlds you can have um, 12 figures that are um, essentially six different figures, and then you can have 12 wholly unique individuals. And that way you have point. your variety. Since it's um, a lower sculpt, you have, uh, or since it's a lower set count, you can spend the money into better sculpts. Better, um, since you aren't designing as many dials, you can make the dials you do have better. And then it's a cheaper product in a summer where people are already shelling out money every month. I think they're interested in cheaper products. No. That's pretty clear. Yeah, it's not, but that's a well, problem. Well, hold on, wait, that's wait, wait. Okay, real briefly, because I didn't really want to talk too much about set design and production. Like, if we look at NECA definitely in the last three years, the sculpt reuse has just elevated. And I remember when NECA was still on realms, and they asked us, 
are you all fine with Smoke Reeves? And everybody was like, yay, dad that's been gone away at war came back. Whatever he wants to do is okay. And, and it's like, we said yes as long as there were different dials. And unfortunately, where I look at it is there's a lot of wasted plastic if you're going to use the same scope. You can easily just be like, what if, two what ifs on one dial, dial A, what if Daredevil was the son of the kingpin, right. dial B, yeah. what that, if that, Daredevil was part of Agent Shield. That is an so, example of something they've done in the past that doesn't sell more figures. That is, an, why do that when they can sell more figures? I mean, yeah. they, they did that for a little bit and they don't do anymore because that would be too efficient. And this is why, and this is why <laughs> I said it is a good point. He's, I find these sets insulting because when you look at them and you look at the behind the scenes things that had to go in with the dial design and with the sculpt design, it is a company that doesn't care about the product. They just want their customers' monies. I, I also think having talked to his kids personally, their focus is we don't want you to buy everything. They're not there for the collector. See, I think, here's my opinion on that, and I don't know, and, and that's a really easy position to stay, to stay because their goal is you have different people who spend different amounts of money. Their goal is to make sure that nobody runs out of stuff they could buy. If the average person spends $100 a month and that's all they're going to spend, that's as much as they're going to spend no matter how much stuff they put out. And that probably won't change. Maybe they do a little bit more stuff, they buy a little bit more stuff. But there are other people who can spend $500 a month or $1,000 a month. They want to make sure, those are exaggerated numbers, don't know, but they just want to make sure that nobody runs out of stuff to buy. Okay, that's a legit argument. So Which is fair to them, too. It is, and in any other year, these sets... Honestly, might not be that big of a deal, but the fact that almost well, no, what I mean right, is the right. fact that each month there's all every month or every other month there is a new set and that's just flooding the market. So we're still not even, yes, we're not recovering from the last dump, <laughs> and so then the next one comes and we're spending money, and then we're expected to possibly, which NECA doesn't care, but there's rock tournaments, there's Whiz Kids Opens, which everyone wants to go to Whiz Kids Open. They're amazing, good times. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we supp supposed to do any of all, you know all of that and still be able to buy product at, and there's con, you know con exclusives which this year unfortunately a lot of them you kind of have to have if you want to play competitive were you, in the future were you around for 10th anniversary yeah you were yes oh yeah Absolutely. so we were all here for 10th anniversary um, this set is billed as the 15th anniversary of Hero Place. They put 15th anniversary hero clicks above Elseworlds and What If in every single press release for this title. It all it's always 15th anniversary hero clicks. What if 15th anniversary hero clicks Elseworlds? They build these sets to their customers as something special. Agreed. And they live deliver. They are especially bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> except those rare, except when they're not. Yeah. Okay. Those rare meta pieces but that are like, just insanely those fun. are good in the game, but I don't think they're healthy. And especially to no. have this set where, like, we're going a new direction, and we're going to make everything a little smaller, a little bit cheaper, except Goblin King, because we're... Yeah, yeah, except Jakeem, Goblin King. Now, they are, their counterpoint was, well, we put in Peace Machine, and we put in uh, BGA, so that you have... Uh, Bizarro Green Arrow. Arrow. Those, so are, they, those are both also done. No, but Bizarro Green but Arrow is sort of... Bizarro Green Arrow is done. After we saw Origins with the freaking Hawkeye trick. And how well, he got Buzz Hawkeye. Well, and now, like, he is yeah. kind of... He is obsolete. He, he's, he's done. Are people really going to be running around with Hawkeye? Yeah. You can call him in a... Uh, oh, you can. Oh, Hawkeye. you can call him in a... Well, for well, five shield, points? Shield level seven. Sorry, shield level seven. Sorry I forget yeah. about the ID cards. Yeah. Yeah. And if he shoots the first time, he can throw the tank, right? If he's next to it. He's next to it, yeah. Yeah, so he can throw the tank, separate him, and still do his chain. Shoot everybody. I would expect him to be down a lot sooner as soon as people realize that they can TK him. I never see him. There's not a lot of offensive TK. Who would you get except for people who can pick whatever powers they want? Yeah, but you're not getting them kind of to the rear of their line so that you can TK when you could just do something else. Okay. You didn't try hard enough. Okay, so so let's sort of go back. Let's let's go. We we we've, we've talked about how WizKids hasn't really done a good job with 15th anniversary. 
And we sort of talked about our expectations. Let's look at the sets. I know we sort of already a little dumped a bit on what if. Um, and we're going to go into Elseworlds in a little bit. But I know what you're talking about. What if the best set in the world? What, what are, what, okay, but I, let's, let's really talk about what if because I feel, and, and even if you listen to my set review, like there's like 12 pieces at max out of what if that I could play. And, well, and so, you're a kind soul, too generous. <laughs> so what, Way too real, real, real quick, we, well, we should, so because the problem is a lot of people do like this set. I don't know if it's, I'm sure it's a minority maybe, but they exist. What are some of the positives? Like what redeeming qualities okay. do we find? That I like nice? Punisher of the Strange. I know that everybody doesn't like him that much. I do like the TV Daredevil because for 30 points, he is probably some of the dumbest tie-up in the game. Like, he's, he's not Joker level, haha -ha Joker level, but he is good. Uh, I do like uh, Iron Punisher, like Did We Save America, 12 attack, 3 damage, I think he's like 7 range, 1 target. Do you think, and the example, uh -huh. it, it infuriated me to no end that if you're going to do Amalgam type characters or Amalgam type characters mm -hmm. where you're mixing this one and that one, every, like, for some reason Punisher's just like, well Punisher's power is he has 12 attack. Yeah, that is that's punch. what they did. That's that what is they punish did. his power. And, he's and, hella accurate. But, but why is he? There's no reason for it. And okay. then he's a good shot. Okay. And then uh, Iron Man mixes with Doctor Strange and he's 40 points. But okay, uh, the, the well, Iron he's Man. also has a PS2 version. Doctor, Doctor like Stark. Doctor Stark at 45. Doctor Stark at 45. Gertrude O'Lace. Cosmic Spider Man. Peter Hunter is okay. I won't play him. I, um, my main goal, first of all, I don't want things to be meta, I, necessarily. I want them to be good enough to play without feeling like an idiot for playing them. No, meta... That is a legit critique. Yeah. That is a legit yeah. critique. And meta should come from tactics... Mixing rarity. Mix, yeah, it should yeah. not come from figures being inherently overpowered compared to everything else. Yeah, like, like for me, the best set ever was, the, I think, the Amazing Spider-Man set. Oh, yeah. Minus... The actual Spider-Man, because that shifting focus did not work for them, and it the was chases, which were pretty lame. Was it AE then? It was something else, but it, it was, was essentially the same else. thing. It more. Was it was yeah. more. 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 But either way, it doesn't matter. But the point is, is every character in that set, with the exception of all of the Spider-Men, did something unique that fit their character, and it was just one thing. It was just like, look, this guy's all right, but if you get him in his scenario... He's the guy to have. Yeah. Look, <laughs> yes. at, look at all the uh, uh, yeah. Look at all the uh, monsters. Yeah, all the thing. monsters. Yeah. Too. Well, like like Lizard had his tail whip. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Electro had his chain lightning. That's cool. Rhino had his straight line charge. That's cool. Vulture even did something I don't remember. But it yeah, was a really good set. But they all <laughs> no, had, it was. But they, without being none of them overpower, they all had one little interesting yeah. thing that you could try and work out in the game and get to use. Whereas this one's just a test to see how few powers they can get on a dial and how cheap they can make it. Yeah, having played Punisher the Strange, um, he's okay. He's fun. He's not great, but it's like what you're talking about. He does, like, a unique thing. He's not overpowered. He's a fun little piece. Yeah, and that's all That's yeah. all I really want. That's why, like, I was actually slightly disappointed in Goblin King 1 because I'll never have him because he's, like, $1,000 now. But is because like I like the I bought the Cosmic Spider Man because I like the Cosmic Spider Man and I like the Goblin King as a character, but he's he doesn't need to be that powerful. He's interesting enough without being was it eight clicks deep, something like that. No, he's more than eight clicks deep if you play him at two seventy five. But something but without yeah. being or maybe having all those stats. I mean, he could have been more well balanced while still being fun with the gimmicks that he's got built into him. True. And now let I mean, let's briefly talk about Goblin King because he got watch watch listed. Okay, Goblin King has the ability, if you target him and you miss, you're minus one attack the next time you target him. He's power cosmic. He has pick a power. Pick two power. Pick two powers. Sorry, pick two powers. Nine times out of ten. And, he, and not only that, you can have it carry over until you pick again. Yeah, why so, not figure so, out that picking powers is overpowered? So Yeah, like so functionally, you can technically have four powers. You can with Goblin King. You can set up a turn with four powers. Like, Engineer was cool because she was limited and you could kill her. You know? Yeah, she was three clicks deep. She doesn't four, have four clicks deep. Four clicks deep, deep. yeah. But she doesn't have a full dive. She can't choose invincibility. Yeah, she. they gave her a restriction on the powers. 
That, it, but, um, so you have yeah. a risk reward with that figure where, yeah, she could choose an offensive option or she could hang back, but at the end of the day, you could kill her relatively easy. Yeah. With you Gob- have to be careful. Yeah, there's no, with figures that can just blatantly pick up powers with no restrictions, Goblin King, Shaquem, and uh, uh, Super Scroll. There are no inherent restrictions on that figure other than Super Scrolls roll a dice, but Super Scrolls roll a dice. Um, Jakeen can't have certain combos, combos. but that is yeah. not. Stopped. Oh gosh, no! You, know, well, you well, make up for it with entities and with resources, yeah. and so it hasn't slowed anyone down. Now, once you put entities and resources on him, then he's ultimately kind of the same as Goblin King, arguably better to some people. Well, he's cheaper. He's cheaper. And now once you put those on there, he's just as expensive. And now in Elseworlds, they've introduced another character with pick of power who is going to be one of the most ultimate support people. Al Jordan from 1001 Emerald Knights. He has the... He can perplex. If he perplexes somebody twice in a row, he can give them plus two or minus two. He can pick any power, and he can pick any, like, combat symbol. <laughs> the, uh, the movement symbol. Yeah. Well, he can be like a giant and stuff too. Oh, okay. Um, I apologize. And he's already like a strong figure. Yeah. And and real quick, I, this is something I talked about with Edward before. Was like for me a real good. So <clears throat> one thing that's easy to forget, I think, when we're talking about balancing figures, is the points is all the balances. You can have a figure that does anything. Yeah. And if it's for the right cost, it's balanced. And, and so a real good uh, indicator of that is you say Jakeem Thunder is a better example than probably Goblin King because it's cheaper than Goblin King. But the fact is, is I personally feel like, for example, it wouldn't be as good because you could fit as much stuff, but you could pay a lot more, and that means he's just under-costed. Well, I, under-costed. I can guarantee you that you would see Jakeem at 170 because that's how much Super Scroll was. Prime. The, the other thing with Jakeem is that he's a prime, and so he gets to break certain things that comes in technically at a chase level price point. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's that's the thing. I always tell people this is like, if you look at a prime, look at whatever slot it is, it is in, and whatever point it's costed for, it's slotted and point costed for the one above it. Um, another thing, too, is uh, speaking of prime, something, this is just a total side note, something I really wish they would do that they are interested in is uh, making things unique, meaning uh, if, like, the Prime characters are so frequently boring and uninteresting, but we have resources. I wish the Prime characters, the Prime concept was just on Prime characters. It was on resources. It was on team bases. Anything that's just really wild and crazy, and you can only have one of those per team, like an entity. You can't put a Prime on a team that has an entity. You know, it's just the more so ubiquitous concept. You are, if that. you're using a Prime, you should be able to use a resource. And... Entities are slowly dying off. Right. People are still using them to definitely with Jakeem. But right. And that said, the prime should be able to counter the battle. Yes. Like they a lot too many of yeah. them would be much better than they actually are. The problem with all of those pieces are they they price them such that and, and it should not be allowed in any world, it, at least in, in any concept here, that you can have Jakeem, you can have Goblin King, <laughs> and you can have Felix Faust. All on one team. You can have the three worst pieces historically, or the P three best pieces historically, in arguably in WizKids history, all on the same team, all at one tournament right now. That said, that should be possible. How scared are you of that team? Is that even a problem for you? It's like no tank, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a world's conversation that I had. Think you can fit the boxing ring on that team? Though? Yeah, you can't fix the boxing ring on that because oh, well, you have five points left. Yeah, that actually can become a little bit more jank than you think. Uh, truthfully, I'm not necessarily scared of that, but where I look at it is, for example, what was more annoying at Worlds was the one shot Faust with another Faust, which is you roll yellow, launch the tank, and it's just like do the two from the tank, reposition everybody, do the three from Faust, kill Faust. It never occurred to me. <laughs> oh no! You no, know, like that combo one shotted a lot of stuff. If you didn't have damage reduction, your Faust is gone. That's why, like, I foobarred so hard in Worlds. I played a Faust with, uh, was it not Brainiac with Eclipse on it, so I couldn't have that happen to me. But still, it 
the, when I look at like that team in particular, if you took off Faust and you told me, look, I'm going to give you Jakeem, I'm going to give you Goblin King at 75, I'm going to give you a tank, and I'm going to give you the boxing ring and put whatever, whatever the heck else on there, I'm more afraid of that. Sure. I'm, I'm legitimately more afraid of that. Because you can have a crack Faust die and just be like, oh, pff, purple, green, light green. Okay, I finally got locked down. Uh, only ranged attacks. Oh, you can shoot me. I'm my Faust is dead. You can have a game like that. Just as much as you can have a game like, screw it, yellow, yellow. Go back to starting area. Lock down, lock down, lock down, you're dead. Which, which, that, these are all examples of just, to me, things that shouldn't exist in the game. That, like, for example, one of the reasons I hate, personally hate, Peace Machine, uh, other people don't seem to, and I haven't dealt with them, so I could just be wrong. I hate anything that just says, I'm going to break some game rules. And when they put that in the game at an affordable price, it has always been bad. So is Samantha Wilson. What's I mean, name? she she can get carried, and then after being carried, attack. She's a chase from Avengers: <laughs> Defenders War. She's so a she can make right. she can be given an action right. after attack. She and she gives plus three when she's carried. Right, but these people like like a person who can stand in your starting area and, and do significant damage across yeah. the map without going there. I can't imagine. No, no how without that, going there is different. Yeah, I can't imagine how yeah. that would ever be a problem. Well, they've had our they've had it thousands, like that, if all and, and, and it's been dumb every time. Uh, the Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. That was different. He only got one attack. He couldn't repeat yeah. that. Like they specifically made it so that he could not repeat that, and he only did what? It doesn't Faust three cover damage? a much larger area, and you had to push him yeah. to get him on that power. You had to do a bunch of shenanigans. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm just saying, like they've had that power in more balanced it's, it's, way before. And, and, and peace peace machine. I don't like it when a character can be plopped on the map and be like, hey, all that stuff that you have, it doesn't work. I hate that. So, um, like, Nighthawk Prime, like... Nighthawk, Nighthawk Prime I hate less because while he stops uh, some bonuses, he doesn't necessarily change functionality. You know, like when you say... Um, when you basically say that nobody on this map is getting one shot right now, that's changing functionality. Uh, when you when they do things like saying uh, you can't see anything, one of the things I hated a whole lot was way back in Incredible Hulk days there was a map. Oh, Shadowlands. Shadowlands. That it was free. You know, it was, I just decided this. So all your guys have range? No, they don't. I hate that. It, it was free darkness. Yeah. It, it, it was it was free darkness. Like you didn't. Yeah, you, you didn't have it like, oh, maybe once if you had a theme team and you had a bunch of melee guys, you'd just be like, screw your 12 range, you've got to come within 6 to do anything. I, I guess what it is is I feel that characters should have a little more strategy than I'm sitting on the map. Which, even though, to get us back on topic, even though um, I really don't like Elseworlds, those dials at least give you options. Yeah, so far they've been reasonable. Even the most powerful one that I saw yeah. was the, 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 the Superman, the chase one. Yeah, that chase Superman is a little ridiculous. But I love, I love it because he is not hypersonic speed. Yeah. So he but, has to get in the fight. But if you look at Presumably. the changes coming to hypersonic speed... Right, it might even be better for him. Yeah. Because <laughs> he can use an object with that attack. Right, which is fine because to me, one of the, the most, uh, the, the best version of Superman ever was the first KC Superman. Because he was a Superman who didn't play like a Flash. No, he started with Charge and yeah. went into Hyper. But hold up, but all fairness, having played Jeremy like a bazillion times like both of us did, and Seth mm -hmm. wasn't around. Jeremy, Jeremy was the one that had it. Wet, uh, what was it? Person? It was a person. Oh, okay. Okay, well, you, you remember Jeremy. No, I have no okay, idea forgot Jeremy too. Right. Okay, all right. I'm the only person Jeremy. Jeremy sounds like a cartoon character. Anyway, Isn't but it a country? No, he was a guy that played during that time with us. But uh, all he would do was sit in the back and wait to activate him to hypersonic speed. It was Jay. Jay would do that. Jay did that too. Yeah. But there was another guy that played. But I said McGog with that soda machine. Ruined his name. McGog also was another issue because McGog was one of those characters that could one shot people. He he actually, in under right circumstances, could one shot literally any character in the game. Yeah, well, standard character, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah Eleven but, clicks. Yeah, he did stupid stuff. Uh, the character selection is the biggest problem with Elseworlds. Okay, let's go to Elseworlds since we're there. And I, Seth, I'll let you open up on Elseworlds. What's your What's your thought about 
character selection and dials? Well, we, we haven't seen the whole set yet, so it, it's a little slightly premature to, to, I guess, give a complete opinion. Um, I may be a good example because I know nothing about Elseworlds. I'm a Marvel guy. I've read a ton of What Ifs. I know all those. I know the basic stuff in, in DC, and I've been kind of filling as I can, as I can over the years. Um, I've liked it better than What If because of my ignorance. Because I don't know the storylines, because I don't know what's missing, I've enjoyed the character selection. I've been disappointed with the dials because I was really interested in, like, the Green Lantern Batman, uh, Green Lantern Superman, I apologize, or the, the basketball Superman, or uh, I did like the, the Western characters, the, the writers. Justice Riders. Um, the Justice Riders, thank you. But there just isn't a lot of... Uh, they, they each kind of have their own little unique things, but they're kind of boring at best. Um, so I'm, I'm still on the fence. I'm, I'm a little more enthusiastic about it than What If. Um, but, you know, What If also had some super meta pieces. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess. But I, I don't want to chime in because I know Jake has a lot to say on this, but I looked at the set, what we know about it, and I, I took a moment and I was just like, is this crap? Like, I literally just sat back. I'm like, is this crap? And I went from at least one to like 20 something. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is playable. Is, is it freaking, you know, rainbow magic? You know, no, it's not all rainbow magic. But there is some stuff, like majority of the stuff is playable. Like the Justice Rider, Wonder Woman, actually all three Justice Riders are really strong in their comics. I mean, the Justice Rider Wonder Woman is stupid. Is that the one where they can't attack back with a range attack? Or they, they, have they, to, they have to target with a range attack. Ones, but she also is like a 10 attack, 4 damage, 6 range, running shot, 7. Like for 60 and, points. Um, she, and Dom. She rolls leadership, she gives people plus one. Yeah, yeah, she has leadership, has like pass keyword. Yeah, the dials aren't the problem. No, I mean like she is stupid good. Like, I, I, and, and I understand, you know, like, your argumentation is, like, we should have more Justice Riders uh, and, and all that. And, I, and, I, and I'll let you unpack that. But when I look at it from a Dial's perspective, and, and that's mainly what I look at, I'm like, this as a set completely goes back and says to What If that the person making What If was high, and then when they got out of their haze, they are like, oh, crap, I have a job to do. And decided to actually do their job, you know, on on Elseworlds, like the Green Lantern that allows you to just take anybody and then be like, hey, I roll this die. Okay, one of you all gets to attack. Oh, I roll this other number. Two of y'all get to attack. Yeah, that's really good. Like, it's a gamble, though. Which it's it's a gamble. Oh, oh, I. But still, you still break the rule. No action after tax. Yeah, right, right. he's still fifty-five points. Yeah, no, no, he's still he, he's great. But I feel that I feel that the risk factor, the not he's just here so he does this, is good enough. Yeah. But and, and real quick, on, yeah, uh, just a minor thing before I completely forget about it. If anybody uh, happens to feel the same way about these sets that they're boring or too weak or uninteresting, suggestion. One of my favorite tournament types. You say, you make your team. Uh, you say nobody under you know a certain amount of points, but that may be a problem in these sets. Um, but no doubles, and you swap teams, and you'll be amazed how good these figures start looking when you're trying to. When you're going to have to fight it with what your opponent decides is the worst thing. Yeah, well, they, they start looking real nice. But go ahead. One, one thing I wanted to interject that I forgot when I was giving my synopsis. One thing I really did like that I, I was enthusiastic about. Since they included a shifting focus Superman and a shifting focus yeah. Batman, the fact that they went back to something they created a while ago and are adding to that, I really like that, and I hope they continue that in the future with other sets and with other characters. Jake, because I, I know I'm letting you unpack all your stuff. <laughs> Just unpack it all, put it, let it out there. Let it. I'm a I'm a big fan of Elseworlds. I own quite a few. I, it is my number one requested set, um, outside of the pipe dream of every game in Astro City set. Um, I was, what? Earth Earth X. Yeah, Earth oh, X. Yeah. I, I really nice too. But Elseworlds is always something I've really wanted, um, and I've been reading those comics, you know, ever since I was a kid. 
to see so many figures in this set that are generics. Five. Six. Six. Six generics in this set. Um, generics from the same stories where they don't even bother completing the teams of heroes in there. Can we assume that those um, six generics are skull per use, or are they? Yeah. They're so all, they're right. yeah, they're all, uh, like, you have the gunfighter, which I think Skid Flash, the two super police and bizarro police are um, the Sullivan. same skull, but, like, with a different head. The Templar and Oliver Queen yeah. are the exact same sculpt. They didn't even give Oliver Queen, like, facial hair or, like, a different head. It's just the same sculpt. And Oliver Queen... So, Doom became the Gotham's a fairly famous Elseworlds story, and they chose a character from it who is, like, in maybe two pages. Um, all the other characters and heroes and villains in that comic, like, you don't see, but they chose one guy. But you, a they advertised with this set, Justice Riders and Planetary. Um, Justice Riders, Planetary, and... Justice League of America. And they also had the pirate bat. Yeah, and then they had the pirate bat up top, which yep. I don't know why they chose him specifically. This is a pirate bat, man, to go with your pirate <laughs> freaking dead stuff. But they, they gave you three stuff teams. Pirate, and they gave, us, they gave us the Justice League of America, which is fine. This is supposed to be a 15th anniversary set. So coming up with an iconic version of uh, the Justice League isn't inherently bad. The fact that they reuse those sculpts for commons, uncommons, and rares is atrocious. They don't, I don't know I don't know enough about Elseworlds and always in the what if, but the not even repainting it, like for example, yeah. for example, the Daredevils. I've seen that guy in like ten different costumes. It wouldn't be that hard guys. No. It's it's even it's slightly worse for Elseworlds because some of the figures they chose, like the rare Superman, who's um, General Zod from um, Liberty Files, he's the exact, he's, it's a normal Superman costume, but instead of yellow on the uh, emblem, it's black. So very minor paint job, and you would have had a accurate figure. Batman from the nail, like the most iconic thing about him is he has these... You mean they didn't do that? They didn't do that. Would have been yeah. Iconic. yeah, if they had just added black to the emblem, um, you could have had the same sculpt, but it would have been a slightly different paint job, and it would have dipped their like sculpt in a different stamp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, stamp. Batman from the nail, the rare Batman, has... He has... So, they didn't bother doing anything with this with these figures. And in the figures that they chose to advertise, they didn't give you the teams. And Edward, you've been saying a couple times this week that like they don't always give you. They all don't the always give teams. you the teams. They don't always. But give you recently, the um, if you look back, at least all the modern sets, when they advertise a sub theme, they have given you the entire sub theme. They've given you enough. And 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 I'll say this, and this is one point I'll yield to you. Three figures from a sub theme is not a sub theme. When that's, that's a your, drop. When that's your booster art, if you look, if you don't count the two generics from Justice Riders, and you look at the figure selection in this set, the most amount of figures from one particular story arc are going to be the chases. Okay, all right, and real quick, and real quick, I just want to make clear for anybody that's listening and be like. There's a cowboy Batman and a cowboy Superman or something, whatever, with the high noon trait. They aren't cowboys. Well, they're... They're, they're, they're not. They're, no, they're, they're, but it's, they, it's, it's a Superman and Batman from... They each had an Elseworlds story. Um, Superman, I think, is called, like, the, the Union Divided. And then I think the Batman one's um, the blue, the black, and the bat. And they're both um, Civil War soldiers on the Union side. And they gave them the same trait that they gave the Justice Riders, which is, I think, what you're. Yeah, say. that's what I'm saying is like, because someone can make an argument. Look, you had Superman, Batman, you know, Martian Manhunter, Kid Flash, and Wonder Woman. When in actuality, you only really have three plus the yeah. high noon generic. And the other characters from Justice Riders that they could have made would have not been Batman or Superman. They would have given. Um, they would have been uh, Booster Gold, Ted Cord, 
Guy Gardner and Hawkman. Four characters that could have ate up a slot, and so instead of having, you know, six Batman, five Batman, however many Batman are in this set, the same with Superman and Wonder Woman, instead of having so many reprinted characters... Well, the set's still DC. I mean, they expect eight, nine Superman... 10, 12 Batman. <laughs> but you know, you, they didn't have to do that. I know. I but, but have we seen this whole set? I mean, other than the chases, has it all gone? Um, because yeah, we still could potentially yeah. see Out, good we? Outside of the chases, which, if they're doing they're doing Dark Knight ret- right, Returns, yeah. um, they showed Superman. We know we're going to be Batman. The other two, if there's any common sense in the world, would be Joker in uh, Carrie Rob. I think it's Robinson, but uh, the one Batgirl. From Dark Knight Returns, I do, I we do. have seen. Sorry, I just to answer his question. Um, between the releases we've had from Scott Porter and from WizKids and all the other magazines and all the different sneak peeks, we have I think all but one figure um, that's been known. We don't, we don't know what a couple are rarity wise. Like we don't know if the one. Uh, that's fine. We know probably Green, Green Lantern, yes. you know, yes. Barbara Gordon, and she's super rare. rare. Yeah, but she's there's only seen. one unknown figure left. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are you going to go ahead? Yeah, sorry. sorry, Josh. Oh, I was just, it was just uh, something about, because we you were focusing on the sculpture use and stuff, is that um, I, I genuinely think that uh, WizKids does uh, attempt to, sorry, uh, the WizKids generally attempts to uh, try new things. They actually haven't done it for a while. Their sets have been pretty uniform, pretty predictable. But they, I think that they run little tests to see what they can get away with for the most part. Sculpt for use, things of that nature. And this was an attempt. And maybe they'll be like, eh, we already overdid it. So we'll ease back. We'll try it again next year. I, with the new I, well, I think they boiled the frog. I mean, in the sense of... They've been doing it, doing it, doing it. I think for the the ones of us that would push back, um, wouldn't. And there was I was listening to this one YouTube channel from this guy. He was ex-military talking about gaming, and what he says is, is that you end up in a hyper normalization. Is that the people that are willing to fight will only fight so long and then get tired and stop, and then the only ones that are left are the ones that are ideologically driven, and then after a while that can't be enough to sustain the fight. And then the, it's won by the, the group that's able to maintain the hyper-normalization. And you, you also have a, a large number of people that are perfectly happy with anything WizKids is willing to give them. And good for them. You know, I'm not... And, I, and, I, and that also Patron. comes... But, I mean, but let's... if That's something we've touched on multiple times. And let's be honest, the main reason why people will swallow a lot of things that WizKids will give them and, and then, yes, I, and I know someone's going to say, but Dark Logos, didn't you want to walk away with a bunch of Connellys and stuff from Origins and stuff? I'm like, yep, I earned that, and they gave it to me, and I'm happy on it, but I'm, I'm going to be realistic about the product. You know, winning some stuff isn't going to bribe my opinion. But when it comes down to it, a lot of people that will just shovel whiz kids, you know, stuff for them are people that love the game and didn't like the game being gone. For that period of time, it was gone. And even I'll admit, when when HeroClix was gone, I played Universal Fighting System. I admitted it on this show multiple times. And there were so many times while I was playing Universal Fighting System, I was like, man, I wish that they had these rules from HeroClix because these rules from HeroClix would fish this jank here, blah, 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 blah. As much as we hate on it, there are a lot of things in, in, in HeroClix that makes it a very functional game and a very enjoyable game from a tactics perspective, in spite of all the other BS that we, we complain about. But No, it, we complain it, about the stuff that breaks those tactics. But Yeah, we break those tactics, but, but when sticks you, around for two years. Or three years. Because, because it's just, <laughs> the problem is, is it only takes one figure to permeate the whole, through the whole system. Whole, whole system, but... Even then, like, I feel that the the hardcore apologists are like, when Daddy was gone at war, we didn't know what to do with ourselves, and we were just stuck there looking at pictures of him and, and wishing the better days and playing the freaking Cats in the Cradle song. 
Yes. And then when, when daddy came back, a little, you know, beat up from war and with some, you know, PTSD, they were just like, yay, daddy's home. Yeah. And I never just had took that. everything to happen. I never had that. I, I, got, I got a question for really all of you. Maybe Seth would have a good opinion on this. But the, uh, so a, a good test might be you take one of these new sets, uh, Elseworlds, whatever, it doesn't matter, Defenders War, even. And if you strip the characters off the dials, and you just look at the dials. You you've just seen a list of dials. How many dials are you looking at thinking, hey, this would be fun to play? Oh, for what if? For, for any, any of them. them. He's talking oh. about any Joker's Wild, uh, Spider Man, eh, Spider Man. No, the new ones with the new ones. That, that counts Joker's Wild, uh, Avengers Joker's Defenders Wild 4, and, you're, and you're, the two new you're ones. You're talking about this new wave of, um, as they're calling it on Realms, right. Alpha Clicks. But, but more specifically, just the it, fact that there's the lack of powers on a lot of these. Yeah, I, yeah I, no, no, no. I, I am specifically uh, referring to these new sets, though. To me, yeah. a, as a player, I came in during the, the Captain America set a few years ago. Um, so I was here a long time ago. This set, when I look at it, reminds, or these newer sets, minus the certain alpha pieces, remind me of looking at those older sets. And not necessarily numerically, because we have higher stats now, but the lack of powers, giving you one or two for a 30-point piece. It feels like these older sets. And yeah, you're right. If you strip off everything else, you just look at the dials, the majority of these dials are boring as heck, and you don't I mean, play. how many can you think of that you think, this dial looks fun and brings an interesting thing to my game? <sighs> Very few, honestly. Like, see that—that's the. To me, that is the problem. None of like, basically, you can choose between boring and overpowered. That's your two options. For yes. These sets. Yes, absolutely. And that is that is definitely. It. So then you're either playing a couple of overpowered game teams, or you're playing extremely underpowered teams with a dozen of people and hoping that you're going to hit because of. Yeah, and it's not even functionally. Cost. Like, I'm not even making the point that if you do that, that it's a bad team. Just that it's not a fun team. To me. Uh, okay, if, if we were to say, like, if I was to look at the dials, and most of them, like, is this going to be fun to play? Like, I'm not going to lie. If no one told me who Goblin King was, I'd be like, I pick you. I'm yeah, play but that's you. because it's an option. Oh, yeah, because it's no, an that, it, bro, This is the issue. He's but bro, I'm yeah. saying fun. Like, how much, like of, okay. how much of the Deadpool and X-Force set could you strip of its character and think, this dial is fun? No, oh, I, did, I wasn't so much a fan of Deadpool. You don't love Cable? No, Cable was sort of fun. Cable was good. Well, well, cable, think, think of it this way. Cable was uh, one of the last few commons that you just like, oh yeah, please let me pull that. He was like that Superman 001 comic. Yeah. yeah. When you pulled him, you just wanted to play him as much you as you felt could. like you had a you chance. You felt like you're, after a while you're like, I have to stop. You have to force but, yourself. It's like there, a drug. There, there's a handful of people in that set with free teleport. Look at Domino. You know, the one where every time she probs you, you, you your attack and damage goes down. Uh, you have your shifting focus Deadpools. They're kind of interesting, but the shifting focus... The point is, is there's enough stuff in that set that if you stripped it of the, the, the character and the sculpt that was on it, that you would, if you were just looking for a fun game to play, not trying to win worlds, that you would say, this does something cool and interesting. It's uh, girl, like you're, you're proposing that question to the wrong person. I'm proposing it to everybody. Yeah, but, I'm but, facing but, 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 but I know, I mean, but, but okay, like, I would say this. If someone told me if I took the names off of Joker's Wild and then I had to play that and say, like, would this be fun? I would be like, no, this is a horrible crap show. No. <laughs> it's still way better than the new ones. Like, yeah. Batman and Rachel Hood. Cool. No, no. It's crap. It's, it, it, no, I'm just saying yeah. is Again, we're taking the names off of it. Okay. If you take the names off of it, Literally, there's probably three figures in that set. I'd be like, yeah, this is going to rule everything. This is not going to be fun. Deadpool, I can see some some fun being there. Uh, what else? There's like freaking 80 bazillion things going through my mind. If, if someone told me that I had to play Avengers Defenders War, I feel like it's not so much favor towards the chases and the super rares that I could have a fight. Like, like I could see some interesting games happen. I did see some interesting things happen for Sealed at, at Worlds. That was fun. You and, and, and even more so, you saw the tone of everyone playing Team Worlds, how different it was from playing Nash, U.S. Nationals and Worlds, uh, Singles Worlds. Completely different. Different in what way? In the fact of, A, people were smiling. <laughs> B, 
folks weren't like, oh, I just pulled crap. We all pull crap. We don't have a chance. We all pulled crap, so it's good. You know, like no one, no one felt like enti- entirely like they did not have a chance to win. Well, you don't have that oppressive like things like the tanks and the ID cards. These little filler things that just hey, this might just kill your whole team. You know? Yes. Yeah. Like you would still like as as much as I don't like just saying like you go into the middle of the map and roll dice. There there are some occasions where going into the middle of the map and rolling dice can be fun. If you have like the leap climb Hulk, the Gray Hulk, if you know, it is frustrating to deal with Black Knight and Valkyrie and Ghost Rider. But even then, they're not unstoppable. That, they, they have to expose themselves to do what they do. They can't get away with it. If you're talking about that charge that they Well, do, yeah, the run through. Yeah, because once they run through, they no longer have their support people, and you're hope and that you've done them. enough that they can't retaliate well enough that you have enough time to catch up with the rest of your people. Yeah, and that Ghost Rider does not hold up. Valkyrie kind of still does. Val- Valkyrie, I, I think Valkyrie's the strongest one. And I'm not saying they're not plenty strong. I just mean that they cannot just get away with doing whatever. They yeah, well, yeah, but but when we come back to a fun factor, I'm like, yeah, Vendors Defenders War is fun. Like, I w- I dread it, and I'm telling everybody this just straight up. I dread it as a coach going into Origin, and they said, mix your DC, what's going to be Joker's Wild, and what if? And I was just like, please, dear Lord, no, let this not be the fifty fifty. Because we've had 50-50 in the past, and the only reason we've gone to one single set was because the other corresponding set was just that broken. And so, like, I understand. I'm like, okay, cool. Like World's Finest. Oh, yeah. World's Finest had God Packs. There was no way you could do Team Worlds with that. Like, literally no way. uh, Aside from the uh, one figure that I can think of in... in, uh, Joker's Wild. What, what is that imbalance about it? The fact is, is that okay? If you pull in between Joker's Wild and What If, if between those two sets you get lucky and you pull Jakeem, Rachel Ghoul. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume not Jakeem. He is at least rare. No, that's that's the issue. Yeah. No, no, no. That's literally the issue. Open if you combine it with What If, then you have the chance to like someone's pulled Goblin King and Jakeem. Yeah. And haha, ha, yeah, yeah, like on one team, on one, and then you can divide those up and make three teams. Three out. teams out. Like, all right, just just looking at it statistically, what if you had in the common slot Doctor Stark? So there's a probability out of your three boosters of what if your team could possibly get three Doctor Starks. Okay, so that's at least all your teams will have prob, or at least two of your teams will guarantee that prob. If you hit the jackpot and you got either Doblin King. Uh, Spidey, yeah, Cosmic, Cosmic Spider-Man. Spidey, Peter the Hunter. As much as everybody like Peter Hunter's not that bad. In Seal, he comes with four boss paws. Yeah, no, in, like, in Seal, sort in, in Seal, he comes. Yeah, yeah, he comes with four paws. The Loki Dormammu is really good. Lo- Lo- yeah, and yeah, what, what about in betweener? In Seal, I was just trying to in- if anybody's actually listening to this to see if they pause and like this dude's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you won. I had, yeah. You beat the only, the Goblin King, The only sir. reason I mention it is because I did make it through a tournament successfully with Inbetweener, and it was unfun the entire time. He is terrible. He yeah. looks cool. <laughs> he looks cool, but you are 100% at the mercy of your opponent to give you powers to be useful. Yeah. And they're not even that good of powers. But, I mean, like, okay, you go back into Joker's Wild, again, saying everything being bounced at the Super Rare. It's like, all right, if someone pulls uh, Penguin, now all of a sudden you have a bunch of spawn that just... Actually, I will Alan give, Scott too. I will give you a conceited point in that aside from these rare things, you know who is common in that set and freaking amazing? Bronze Tiger. Bronze Tiger. That is. dude is great in seal. Technocrat too. He, technocrat. Yes. You're right. You're right. Even even though I would say the, the Joker's Wild is probably lower tier than a normal set, it is still significantly higher tier than at least as far as being kind of all over the place. Than your, uh, defenders war. Yeah, yeah. no, and that's that's one of the problems with uh, like if you're looking at it from a sealed perspective is that the people who pull well, like it skews, like that set skews hard, yeah, really right. hard. And yeah. If you get unlucky and pull Whereas, poorly, then you're, Avengers defenders war 
does. It's a very balanced seal set. It's, it is. It's, you it, can get unlucky, true. but you yeah. don't really get lucky. You, you don't get boned hard. Well, I mean, there's a couple rares that are lame, but... Yeah, yeah you, you just... Page or, no, just no, Karen Jessica, Page is... Jessica has a rare... Jessica, it's Jessica Jones, right? She, yeah, I got her in between her. Yeah, okay. Foggy. I actually have she well, though. Well... Foggy is question, but the, but, yeah. but the point, point is, is if yeah. all you have is Hulk Foggy and, and Karen Page or, or, or yeah. the other one, you need meat to go with it, you know? Yeah. What were you going to say, Seth? Nothing. There's another rare I, I was forgotten. It doesn't matter. But, so you, but the point is, is you can still get unlucky, but no one's going to get lucky I win and it's done. You know? Yeah. Like, like there's I'll nothing more frustrating me. And in fact, my last several seals... I've been very frustrated. Actually, not the last one wasn't the most terrible, but what always happens is we come and you have all these dreams. You're like, imagine what I could pull. It would be great. What if I got this one thing? What if I got cable? What if I got anything? And every time, it's like, well, here's none of that. Here's nothing interesting. It won't even be fun to play. I might do okay in the tournament itself, but you watch somebody pull the best figure. They've won the tournament already. Even if they manage to lose, they've got Goblin King. You know, or something like yeah. that, and then they get to win too. The game like rewards their good luck with more good. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, go ahead, sir. Or there's the flip side of watching the nightmare of someone pulling the iconic piece, and then watch because of their through their inexperience them tank the tournament, and you feel that physical internal pain of if I had that piece. Yeah, you know, it would be amazing. This wouldn't be going on right now. I, 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 I don't mind that as long as I win. Like, like <laughs> if, if they, oh, no, no, if I they just want to be on the record. Josh and I have the same philosophy. Like, as long as we win, it's a great tournament. Yeah, like, like it reminds me of what that line from uh, uh, what what is it the uh, the Patriot or whatever when they were talking about that general and they're like, this guy's a genius. You know, he, he's a genius and he knows it and it's his weakness. And the other guy was like, I prefer stupidity. I will take stupidity <laughs> over anything else. I, I've seen I have seen terrible people ruin good figures, and I'm fine with that. Is, it, I, what, what, what sucks is it when a competent person gets it, and then you're like, well, never mind. Yeah. Well, I don't know. No, I was just going to say, for me, at the end of the day, um, these sets don't live up to the hype. Yes, the hype is don't. self. To me, the hype is self-built. Like in me, it doesn't. I agree 100. percent But it's my expectations that when they say, "What if I got all these grand pictures of, oh wow, what can we see?" And but you should. Yeah, and yeah. they knew you would. Um, that see, yeah. Sometimes when a new product comes out, something really shiny. Edward, you mentioned No Man's Sky. Oh gosh, I was just thinking no, no, about no, that. That, that is a perfect example. No Man's Sky is a perfect example of people overhyping a product themselves. Like the company, well that company actually lied through their teeth for that whole time they were showing that game. But people the demo, yes. people got behind that product and really pushed it. WizKids announced the 15th anniversary and it wasn't in a bubble. People weren't looking at that set and being like, oh my god, this is going to be awesome. They had reasons to think that set was going to be awesome based on stuff that WizKids had already put out. And when it doesn't live up to previously released product, that is an issue. I, I will agree with, um, I actually, I haven't touched on the house worlds at all, and, but I agree, Seth, I'm in the same boat as Seth, uh, and this is relevant to your point of self-hype versus their hype. Uh, I've been paying, I haven't been paying attention to house worlds because my whole focus was on what if? I'm not a DC fan. I mean, they're yeah. all right, um, but I don't really know who's in it. I don't really care who's in it. Uh, I when when the set came out, what I'm looking for is good dials. I really haven't seen any. I like I kind of like the Chase Superman because he looks fun, but uh, but nothing that I particularly care if I ever get or not. But I will say because I had no expectations, I didn't know what I wanted. Is at least compared to what if? I at least thought the sculpts looked cool because. From what I saw, like with the Scott Porter video and everything, it was at least less boring looking than 12 daredevils sitting next to each other and 12 punishers. Like, this guy's all red, this guy's all black. They just, I'm not even saying they are better, they just look. No, no, this more, more colorful. Even, or even like that. the uh, reprints, or the re sculpts in Elseworlds, from, from the video of Scott Porter opening stuff, they do look like they're 
like the wash on the figures well, is a little bit nicer. Like the Green Lantern just looks prettier to me than any. Yeah, no, movie they are. They, they are a little nicer. But look at the sculpts we had for 10th anniversary. What about them? like even really even common figures had some really amazing sculpts. They Jolly Rancher. Uh, they they use Jolly Ranchers. That plastic Thor. Entire time. That common Thor was terrible. That cop, no, the one who's him. holding the one who's holding the hammer above his head and the lightning bolts coming down. No, he's not the common. He was that's, super that's rare. The, that was no, super no, rare. Not, no, but there's no super. Uh, it's the, he's the higher. Oh, that's the higher one. The, the common, common one, one looks as terrible. He goes as like that. Boring, he, he, He's in a boring pose, but that's a really like if you look at that skull, it's a really the two hundred and one hundred point one. Yeah, no, I know. But you're talking about, about the one that's based off Ultimate Storm. Yeah, you're talking about the one where he's holding the hammer and he's flying up. Yeah, yeah. Look at the common Iron Man. Uh, yeah. Where he's like, shoot, has flames coming out of his hands and stuff. You know, I, I will admit that um, part of the problem is, is so the guy, whoever that guy is, maybe it's more guys, but the guy who did, you remember that old Blackest Night set from a long time ago? The guy yeah. who did that proved to me that clear plastic equals cool looking hero books. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, yeah. there's no... I mean, there's not a lot of clear plastic on it. I mean, there may be some. No, flame. whenever, and they whenever you hit, it, so, or, sorry. Yeah, whenever you get a figure with some sort of effect on it, um, it looks cool. Look at that common flash, or the the, the flash um, re-sculptor using in Elseworlds. Worlds. That's a really cool looking flash. Yeah. Or so, or yeah. light set when they came out with that, they used a lot of the clear plastic, and we were all whether we liked the dial or not, they were visually. Yeah. Very beautiful, and, and you like to look at them. You could set them out and just kind of look at them. Uh, street Fighter, the perfect example. Yeah, of, yeah. I, I, I don't care for it, but they set. Yeah. But no. visually, that sets yes. off. Awesome. That is the perfect example because when you say like clear plastic, you're like, well, what clear plastic are you going to put on the Punisher or Daredevil? Street Fighter set is a perfect example. Yeah. You're like, we don't need a reason. We're going to put clear plastic on yeah. every <laughs> one of these guys. The, the, the Punisher from uh, the Civil War. OP kit, where he's firing, the t he has the two guns, and one he's like firing three bullets out of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or the one, what they could have done, yeah, like uh, when he's got a bazooka, the bazooka rocket launcher or whatever, you could have fire coming out of each end as showing that it's going to be firing. Or you could have, with go cheese, if you're going to go cheese, the spider, spider man who's got his arm reached and what if, put a pow on top of it. Let's go old school. Put something kind of silly in there a little bit. I, I guess we the, laugh at that. I guess the point is the the problem with the set is the the what if set doesn't necessarily have any doesn't necessarily have problems that we haven't seen before, but it feels like Wiz Kids tried to get away with too much at one time. Yeah, you know they tried. You know they usually sneak these things through under cover of other stuff. Like I remember the first set that, that was really big on the sculpture use. To me, that I recall anyway was the Incredible Hulk set. But oh. at, at, at least, at least in that set, they did different colors. They did. Uh, they would put different pieces on. Like, oh, it's the same Hulk, but he's got a different arm. This one's got little balls. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 That's also they had the robot Hulk. E yeah. Even yes, then, yeah. even then, they recognized that it couldn't just be the exact same thing repainted. That's what Fast Forces are for. I, and, yeah, and, they gave you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they made each figure, and even if it was a re-sculpt, each of those figures was visually identifiably a different figure. Figure, because yeah. of the paint job. Okay, real quick, and there's something that I, I think that actually now I feel is relevant to bring up as an impact that I didn't think was an issue until you brought up was like, if you look at the person who made 10th anniversary versus the person who made 15th anniversary, and then I realized they fired that guy. I, I, I know who they're because because it, it didn't dawn on me. It's like not last year, but the year before. Uh, crap. Now, in, but, in their defense, he made 10th anniversary Iron Man. <laughs> as much as I hated that. Well, that was a, well, he signed the skull. No, no, he didn't design the skull. I'm talking about no. from from dial design. Dial. He designed dial. The dial. Dial design, character design. And that and figure, I, I I will defend that figure is a well designed. Well, well but but he, he, he was he, just over the top. Hear hear me out just a bit. So when when I look at this transition that we have now, and what we've been dealing with for our, like almost really about like a year and a half now, 
the last bit of that guy's work would have been falling off around Superman Wonder Woman. And then we get what we have now. But I th- here's the problem, and th- this is something that, you know, and, and so many people, like on HC Realms, they'll defend these people. Now, I'm not saying everyone will, and many mistakes the same people who defend them, but there's always somebody defending them. And um, the, the problem is, is when it feels like everybody in a group, as a group can look at this and say, what, what are you thinking? You know, like, like there's a difference when I feel like any jerk could come in and do a better job. You know, like I don't, I, when it gets to the point where I feel like I could have made a better set than they're making, that's a problem. These guys are supposed to be specialists, you know, I mean, they spend their time doing well, they this. Well, don't, they don't let the people who designed the set, well, from what we've heard, they don't let the people dedicate themselves to one product. Yeah. yeah. So they are designing every single product that WizKids puts out. You don't have anybody whose job it is to just focus on hero clicks. Oh, well, you're, so they're you're working on dice stupid. Games. Why would they do that? I mean, that's the whole <laughs> money. Because it, it's so they do attack wing, they do dice, dice masters, to board the, yeah, games, that's, that's board ridiculous. Games, that's, that's, so they're all overworked, just trying to yeah. pump out whatever well, they can pump and, and, out and get to the next. And so the product suffers, but no. people keep buying a product, so it works for them. So the question is, how bad would it have to be for people to actually not buy the stuff enough for them to? Well, you could. That's that's the problem because that's, that's what all, testing. all four of us, the amount we buy um, has dramatically gone down the past couple of years. Gosh, yes. Um, but then you have people who will come in and just buy a brick because they're comic book fans, and they might not even play the game, but they'll buy it for the sculpts. So there's a built-in fan base. Fan base. That's not that will buy a product no matter what, as long as it's well. Right. Economically, because they keep making the game to where the super rares, primes, and chases are worth so much when they first come out, it is worth it for the kind of average person or the money person that has the money up front to just buy a case or two cases oh. and then flip those because they made their money back. And what are they really out other than the initial investment, which they get back in the back? Honestly, they all seem to drop. Like you're talking about super rare, for the exception of a few, they're almost cheap to get. That, I mean, that's true. But if you, if as soon as it comes out and you get it, if you flip it, then when before everyone gets it, you can make your money back the, quick. There, there's always going to be people with more money than brains that you can sell this stuff to. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's the now now in their defense, you know, you know, and I'll, I've always said this is you know there are people that have enough money that they can waste it and they don't care. And good for them. That's fine. But you're going to run out of those people real quick, and that's exactly what happens every time. I think that's in particular what's going on with Dice Masters. Is that like I, when I went and I talked to somebody from Dice Masters at, at Origins, they they were talking about the shrinking community, and they were talking about pretty much we had similar problems, you know, with Hero Clicks that Dice Masters had. And I told them, Josh, about your gripe when you went over to Dice, Dice Masters for a bit. It's like they make great stuff, but the stuff's still broke, and they still don't talk to us. They still don't. It's like they don't understand their own games. I mean, there are certain things that when you find out, you're like, oh, if they do this, it's actually kind of broke. And, you know, that happens. But there are some stuff that the second you see it, you're like, what were they thinking? They have no financial incentive to change. And as much as the people in Whiskids might want to work, it's probably NECA who's telling them, no, just get product out. People will buy it. Well, okay, let's talk about incentive, because really what I feel it comes down to is WizKids, this is their first year where I would say they are thinking about competitive. They admit that a lot of people at the top don't understand, and so they're bringing in people that are more focused on competitive to sort of help their competitive scene. But at the same time, from a design perspective, I also know there are some competitive people that are there to help. But I also know previously, if the history stands true, that they're not being shown everything or they're not being listened to when it's like stuff is broke. So anyway, um, let's let's wrap this up. A little last final thoughts. Any, any final thoughts that you have? Because uh, I know this has definitely gone like longer than I thought it was, but it's just been organic. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, Josh. Any, any last thoughts, whatever they may be? Uh, not really. I mean, just 
I personally, I, I used to play, well, I guess I still play a lot, but I used to buy a lot more hero clicks and I don't because anymore. I, I, I play in the sealed because sealed are fun, except for when I pull crap, which is always... You used to collect sets. I used to collect sets. I still have them at home. Does anybody want them? <laughs> what sets? Leave comments on the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> but I've been fairly transparent and they're and they just keep doing mind-blowingly dumb things. Now, 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 in their defense, uh, they can get 95% of the stuff right and ruin it all with this 5%. Like, I'm not even saying they aren't, by and large, doing a just fine to great job. But this little bit of stuff that gets in just ruins the whole thing for me, to a point. It's why I have no interest in going to big conventions or anything, um, because it's, it would just be depressing, actually. Um, but uh, you know, but that that's me. So that, from my point of view, it's these new sets. They're boring. They're not interesting. I actually did love Cable or Deadpool and X Force um, set. I thought that was just fine. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that was a fun set to me. So you know, if you disagree with that, then you probably realize I'm stupid or something. All right, Seth. Uh, my my last comments are for uh, kind of middle of the road players or beginning players. With the way that they're doing sets now, it's easy to jump on the hype as soon as it comes out and just want to grab it all up. But if you can wait three or four or five months or even six, it's really worth your while to get it on a secondary market because you can get it for so much cheaper with just a little bit of patience. Especially if you're a casual player and it doesn't matter for this next rock or next WizKids Open. Uh, because you can get some really good pieces, really cheap, save your money, and hopefully maybe getting on the secondary market will, will possibly eventually teach NECA. It won't, but hopefully, you know, in theory, it'll teach NECA that maybe they need to step up their game a little bit more. So that then those of us that are casual players will start buying bricks again, start buying cases again. If I can add to your point, um, I don't know that anybody who listens to this wouldn't already know this, but hero clicks don't do not confuse hero clicks as with an investment. Uh, all they do is go down in price, with rare exception. Don't worry about missing out on one expensive one. It, you know, like in this case, if you didn't grab the Goblin King the first day he came out, and now you're really regretting it. If you did that for everything, it's just easier to wait and then buy the Goblin King than to try and snatch up everything real quick at the beginning. None of it holds its value. It all goes down. Yeah. Goblin King will be cheap eventually. I mean, after he's retired. Uh, but uh, Or freaking watch listed really bad. Yes. What do you think they'll do? you think they'll do anything? I bet they don't. That they should. might. Because uh, the, pre the prevalence of him... Uh, him Jakeem and Faust and but these things, worlds. These things aren't new. They are not learning their lessons. No, but they don't, <laughs> but they don't inherently see things until it's after. Their no, they, they saw this with freaking uh, Super Spro when he was on the watch list before, too. They didn't do anything to They didn't Spro. do anything but to they, him. And Faust has been on the watch list at least once, if not twice. twice before. They fixed they fixed it. They fixed one no, thing. They but fixed oh, it. Well, the, the thing that would have fixed him easy Sorry, was geez. all of his powers are within range and line of fire. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been. He still could have been nasty, but it, it would have at least brought him down a number of right. Levels. He doesn't have to crush everything. Yes. To be good, they don't have you know. But you at least put him within line of retaliation if he's within seven or. He wouldn't be S plus plus. He would just be S. Agreed. Okay, Jay. Sorry, Jay. All right. I was going to buy a case. I had a case um, set aside for me for Elseworlds. Canceled it. I am buying the starter because, as a judge, I get all the maps for the players here at our venue. Um, but other than that, no, I do, I do. No. Yeah, no, you're yawning, sorry. Um, I'm buying the starter for the map for our venue, but other than that, I'm only going to be buying like single figures if the store opens up a brick. Don't buy any else worlds. Don't buy any what if. Um, let NECA and WizKids know that these aren't sets that need to be supported. And then at the end of the day, 
this is all moot because Thor's going to come out with new rules and a new starter and all these sets are going all like these figures that from this past year are going to be outclassed anyway so I mean it's all terrible it's a terrible summer <laughs> something that speaking of that guy's something that's very sad to me to look at is I'll be honest with you is Prior to What If and Elseworlds coming out, I was actually quite excited for the prospects of what could be in the Thor set. Right. And now that they've made it clear what their vision is for the game going forward, at least for the oh, time the new being, rules and stuff. Not necessarily the new rules, but the dials, the way they make the dials. The dials are going to change. Maybe, maybe. And and I will I will judge Thor on its merits when I see it. But as of right now, I don't care because they don't produce anything I'm interested in. Recently, it's been like a year. No, that's not true. Deadpool and X Force. That rocks. You know what I'm excited for? The Thor Ragnarok movie set. Okay. Well, well, I think that's gonna be a good set. Well, I, is that be. coming for real? Why wouldn't I? I assume it might be. I mean, it feels like they would have one. Except they're gonna have it at so. Target. They're, Tell them to quit putting it. Yeah, target. Jeff Goldblum's gonna be the target. I mean, they had a Wonder Woman set. So why wouldn't they do it? Not, but not movie based. God. No, it wasn't movie cool. based, and it well, did only had two Wonder Woman. Yeah. Anyway. A- anyway, like, uh, like it, you, you can see how. Uh, Ask Edward. I. Uh, Edward. <laughs> Dark logos. <laughs> Dark logos spry on PSN. And <laughs> Throw that uh, out there. <laughs> Eater of uh, rotisserie chicken and kale. Yeah. What are your thoughts? About what are your final thoughts? But my, Take us home. My my final thoughts is I still stand by my view that what if is pretty much a poop emoji with a cherry on top. I stand by that. It, it is crap. Uh, minus like ten to twelve figures that I would actually play. Unfortunately, the majority of them are higher rarity. Uh, Else worlds makes me excited because I'm like. Woo! I can see some broke stuff there. Like I, I, I see some fun things that I can do. Is that ba- that Batman your style? Huh? That that which, Batman, which Batman? The, the one that uh, uh, gives everybody stealth, and then when he dies, is that are you looking at him at all? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I know how it's much you Batman. like. It's not Batman. It's Dick Grayson Batman. No, no, no. no, no it's, it's, next it's, it's the Bat God. Whoever is, oh, don't Nick, care. Oh, talking about the dial. I apologize. I know how much you love the Indigo Lantern. And, and my Barry Bill. Barry Bill. Oh gosh. Yeah, and Barry Bill. Oh gosh. He gives everybody. But he's got to die to really seal that deal. So it's mainly like, that I can give him up for a hundred points. I'll sacrifice him. Big, big games. He's showing up. I'll sacrifice him to make Beta Ray build them. No, Else Worlds <laughs> is a better set than What If. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, I, I'll just say this. Like, Bar I love him high though. I, I, I mean, yeah, bar, it's the, the bar is like if you're playing limbo and the bar is ten feet above your head. That's 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 pretty much what the bar is. But I'm I'm interested in Else Worlds. It actually has me looking at not just super rares. So that part makes me happy. Yeah. When's the last time you were this excited for a common? Which common are you excited for? Any, um, anyone does that Wonder Batman, Woman. Oh, that, Batman oh, that Superman, that Green Lantern. The Wonder Woman and Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah, that Green Lantern. Like, when's the last time you saw comments that were like this much of a mustache? Which, by the way, they should have every. They don't. This is why one of the reasons that Bullet X Force was great for Sealed is comments that you can get excited about. Yeah, that's important. But yeah, all right. But uh, you can see, like, these are the guys that I, I talk with. I've had you know Josh on the show before. I've had Jake on the show before. His first time. I think I've had, it's the first time I've had Seth on the show. Yeah, it's the first time. Uh, and I, I like to thank them for coming back. Uh, and, and I appreciate it because these are the guys I hang out with at my local comic book gaming store sort of thing. So uh, that's it. You can follow me on the Twitter at, um, at StartOverPod. It came from outer space. And uh, let me know, man. Uh, out there, there's uh, Universe A337. They're having a very similar conversation, except it's about Zinkleborbs. Uh, you can follow my random random musings on Twitter. You can find out when new shows up. You can email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it uh, 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 awesome, baby. Uh, let me know what you think about Elseworlds. Is it better than What If, or am I delusional? And uh, you can buy a shirt from the description below. Uh, 
I've turned ads off. I'm just going to really briefly talk about this. Uh, I did not know it was running like seven, eight ads per show. So I'm turning ads off because I haven't gotten revenue from Google in a long while. Uh, and so if they're giving you seven, eight ads and they're not paying me and I can't turn it into something good for the show, then I'm just going to turn it off and just tell Google to go pay for the show and the hosting and not get paid. So screw Google. Uh, double fingers up on the same hand instead of two different. Anyway, uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. And remember, we all have to start over sometime.